A couple weeks back, I encouraged people to ask me questions in the comments, and they did. Now I've been spending the last couple Mondays answering the questions. Anthony Avon says, Your old background used to be a room made of Lego. That was very nice. Are you maybe a fellow adult fan of Lego? This is awkward, Anthony. I think you have me confused with someone else. Uh, and that person is Khaleesi Grimes 82 who's actually a character I played on this channel and on my other channel, Adam Olinger. Now he's a Patreon-only exclusive. That show was called The Cringe. It was a satirical character who loved every movie and pop culture reference that came his way. He did hate some things, but only if it was popular to hate on those things. He was essentially a shill. Uh, that, that was a yes man who said whatever he could for views. He's got a good energy to him. He's very upbeat. He's very positive. Even if it is fake, people enjoyed him for the most part. The problem was he was confusing newcomers to the channel and turning off some that had been here for a while. You might be an example of one of those such people. Uh, that was not me. That was a character I was playing. So if you want to watch The Cringe, it's on Patreon. Some of the old episodes are on this channel. A bunch of them are on Adam Olinger. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep them there or if I'm going to make them all private and just for patrons only. I don't know. I, I, I'm really not really sure. They don't do me any favors on the second channel. They're not picked up at all on YouTube algorithms. All that said, I'm a huge fan of Lego, specifically the Harry Potter series. Have a whole bunch of them upstairs in our library. I have kids, they have friends, they come over, they screw with my Legos. They're supposed to be show pieces, but that hasn't stopped Connor and his buddies from playing with them. So there's Legos on the ground, there's pieces missing, it kills me. You have no idea how much it kills me. But hey, before you know it, the kids will be out of the house and these Legos will be back to tip top shape and I'll die alone with them by my side in pristine condition. Rob Luter, Rob Lutter, I'm not sure, says, How are you so ripped, jacked, massive, and swole, yet so heartfelt, comedic, down-to-earth, and relatable? By the way, I've been going down in order of the questions based on the upvotes. A lot of people asked about workout stuff, so this is kind of a good one to catch all of those questions. Rob, to address your question, I'm not sure being ripped or comedic are exclusive. I think you can be both just fine. Look no further than the celebrities up on a pedestal today. Dwayne Johnson... The Terminator, I mean, Arnold, he was very charismatic. He was very funny. Sylvester Stallone, uh, always a treat. Uh, Dave Bautista. I mean, there's tons of wrestlers slash actors that are much larger and uh, in better shape than I am that are doing just fine on the comedy route. The Matt's channel asks, what would you change in a movie going experience if you had the powers to do so? For example, I reckon you'd take away applauding a film during the credits and random cheers in the audience. Matt, you would reckon wrong. I actually enjoy people cheering during a movie as long as it seems appropriate. As long as like the main protagonist isn't being murdered and then people are like, yeah, like trolling the audience, which never really happens for me. I don't really witness that, but applaud. I, I like feedback. I like the interaction with an audience. There was nothing better for me than, well, pre-COVID, going to a theater full, packed to the brim of fans of the film, yelling, cheering, chanting lines when, when something was happening that was appropriate like in lord of the rings i'll never forget seeing return of the king when sam wise throws frodo on his back and is climbing up mount doom the fans are going nuts in the audience chanting rudy because of the movie rudy where he plays a football player and he, he gets in for the final play anyway it was so awesome it was such a great experience so yes i love movie interaction as for the applauding the film during the end i mean that's just silly but i don't i don't really care it's just like what are you doing the the, the director is not here but whatever they're expressing themselves they had a good time okay fine what i would take away absolutely are the phones from the movie theater i'm still old and curmudgeony where i don't want to see that shit i paid to watch what's on the screen not what's on the little screen you are not special or important in any way is what i always tell my children and myself every morning in the mirror you have no reason to be on your dumbass phone looking at facebook or twitter Nothing's happening in the next two hours that requires your utmost attention, and it certainly shouldn't take mine away from the screen. I paid my hard-earned money to see it. I want to see it. Phones have to go. I know places like the Alamo House are really huge on that. I don't have any of those by me, so I just have to deal with it. Some people have suggested, hey, Adam, wait a couple weeks uh, when the theater isn't full, and then go. That doesn't work because I have a channel where I review movies and people expect them in a timely manner. And if I don't get them out early enough, they'll be irrelevant in like a week. Also, that hasn't changed. I've gone to movies weeks later. Those people seem to give even less shit. 
They're like, eh, there's only like two other people in here. I can just watch this while I'm on my phone. That's fine. My dim is down. Screw you. Other people have suggested going opening night. That's when I go. That's when you think, oh, the diehards are out. No, they, they care even less sometimes. Snake Charmer asks, do you like roller coasters? Also, if you can meet one of your actors, actresses, who would it be? Also, why the haircut? Kind of a three for fun there, Snake. Also, my voice isn't still fully healed from whatever disease I have, possibly COVID. I don't go anywhere, so that's that's bizarre. I think I just have uh, allergies or this, this cold and flu season in Minnesota. It's kind of a bitch. So, uh, yeah, get your flu shots, kids. To answer your first question, yes, I love roller coasters. I'm a big fan. We have Valley Fair here in MN. Like to go there once in a while. I haven't taken my kids yet. We usually, we're a Mall of America family. We like going to the Mall of America. We like going to Nickelodeon Universe and uh, going on the SpongeBob ride, going on the Avatar ride. It's good shit. Your second question I answered previously. Who would I meet if I could meet an actor? I said a few people. Patrick Stewart was one just for his wisdom and his years of experience. I'd love to hang out with the Always Sunny cast. I'd love to hang out with Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, people like that. Witty individuals. I, I think uh, Amy Poehler would be great. I think Tina Fey would be amazing, although I've had a crush on her forever, and I know she's getting older, but that hasn't changed my mind. Uh, so that would be dangerous for me. That'd be temptation. Although my wife loves her too, so. Well, anyway, anyway, we'll keep going. As for your haircut question, it's getting better now. It's growing out. There's still obviously some issue with the fade that didn't fade at all, so it looks really butchered, but we're moving past it. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made at the Barbers. Dan of Steel asks, what is your favorite comic book movie of all time? Dan, I answered this in a previous week. I'm just gonna say X2, X-Men United. That's the one that instantly pops into mind. There's many more I love, but I'm gonna go with that. Trevor Sewell says, explain your gym routine and schedule, exclamation mark. He's, he's not asking, he's demanding. What are your fitness goals and what do you tend to gravitate towards, lift-wise? All right, T-Money, I'm gonna say this right now. I was in better shape when I was going into the office five days a week because I would work out over lunch with two or three other guys and we'd really push ourselves. I'm not in bad shape now, but I've definitely gone down on like how much weight I'm lifting because I'm by myself in my, my dungeon down here. I have a bunch of weights. So I do like to work out Monday through Friday, no breaks, take off Saturday, Sunday. Uh, usually I hit it hard for about 45 minutes. I kind of switch off based on boredom of the exercise routine, but I found one that works the best for me and my gangly body type is to do uh, kind of the split workouts every day. So chest and legs on Monday, which is what I did today as of recording. Then we have back and shoulders. Then we have arms on Wednesdays. And then I just repeat that again. So, you know, two a day, I guess the arms, it's uh, tries and biceps sort of a thing. Usually I focus on four different workouts. Uh, chest day, I'll do incline, I'll do decline, and I'll do regular. So, and when I do those, I do usually like a set of 12, a set of 10, a set of eight, a set of six, and a set of four. So I end up doing around 15, you know, different sets of bench moves. And then also I'll do, you know, the, whatever these are called, the flies. Um, and then I, I do this one where I hold my weights in front of me and I go up and down. I don't know the technical terms for a lot of these things. <laughs> I just do enough so that I feel painful afterwards. And I usually do. Now, when I do those sets of 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, the way I found to gain a lot of bulk or a lot of, I guess, strength, I'm going, I, I'm still going for strength for some reason instead of tone, which maybe I should switch it up. But for strength, I always start small and keep adding increments of 20, so 10 on each side. So if I start bench at, you know, a couple of 45s and 25s, I'll do that 12, and then I'll add 10 to each side, do a 10, add 10 more, and so on. Uh, you can do a fun little burnout that really kills you where you go up the pyramid, then back down. So you do the 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and then you take 10 pounds off of each side and you go back down the pyramid in reverse. So then you go 6, 8, 10, 12. By the end of it, you're so burnt out, but the weight is less, so it kind of evens out. It's a fun little thing. This went on way longer than it needed to. I also like to throw in Ring Fit, which is a game for the Nintendo Switch. It's amazing, I've talked about it before, but essentially I hate cardio. And it's like a video game where I get to do cardio. It's a, it's a full-blown RPG where you fight people doing 
there's like 65 different moves you can do plus you're you know you're jogging in place it's a resistance ring i can splice in some footage on top of this to, to prove what i'm talking about but i will say this god damn i want a pokemon game in this in this series i want to be able to catch pokemon while running on the trail and battle pokemon using the ring fit thing oh that would be so nice Five people know what I'm talking about right now. Let's move on. I'm sorry, I should also point out that my workout routine starts at 5.30 in the morning because I have to get the kids off to school with Lindsay who also goes to work. So I usually run downstairs at 5.30 to 6.30. Connor gets up at 6.45. Uh, we do a little breakfast. I get all the like freaking shakes and crap ready for everyone. And then we're off to school. I drop the kids off, I come home and then I can start work after showering. It's it's not ideal, but that's what we have to do. The big thing I can say about working out is just do it. It doesn't matter like what you're really doing as long as you're actually putting in some work and, and getting a sweat build up. After a couple weeks, you get into a formula, you get into a rhythm, and you want to kind of do it. And then after a month or so, it becomes something you need to do. And that's where I've been for years. Sorry if I butcher these names, but Afanio Jens, that cannot be right, says, do you plan on continuing your Twitch channel? I watched one of your previous videos and I loved it. I refuse to say never because I'm a huge gamer. It's just really hard to build up different followings in different places. There's not a lot of crossover. Uh, there certainly wasn't a lot of people that crossed over here to my Twitch. And when I was doing it, I only had maybe 10 to uh, 20 at the max watching live and that's being generous. I, there were some days where I had like three people watching and that's kind of disheartening. I understand that you can watch it later, but you know, I, I'm trying to get that engagement while I'm playing a game and trying to be funny and, and have constant conversation going. I know some people on Twitch are just silent and play games and, and that's really it. That's not me. I, I, I want to be entertained. I figured if, if you're wasting your time watching me out of the millions of other pieces of content out there, I should at least make it worth your while. So yeah, it's there, it's Adam Olinger on Twitch. I haven't put anything out for months, but uh, that doesn't mean I won't down the road. So you can always, you know, just sub there or whatever it's called, follow, I can't remember what it's called. Kenny Hankins says, out of all the new Star Wars announcements, which one are you the most excited for? Mandalorian season three. Let's move on. Guide to Street Magic asks, is there anything you would have done differently with Screen Rant in hindsight? I, I don't know, it's, it's so hard to say. The Screen Rant thing was initially just supposed to be me on a podcast for them, which I did, but then I emailed the guys and said, hey, is there any opportunity for me to do a show for you? Like, it was great that I did the podcast, which nobody listens to, but you know, I have a channel. I can, I do the, the writing, the filming, the editing. I know that that's something that's kind of useful for some people that, uh, and it was very useful for Screen Rant because oftentimes their contractors only do one of those three. So they'll have three different people working on one thing. You'll have the person that writes it, the person that voices it, and the person that edits it. And that's for like a top 10 things you missed on The Simpsons this week, which is just crazy to me. Like managing all those people, they have hundreds of contractors. I, I couldn't, what a disaster. Anyway, so I just said, let me do something. And then they gave me the docu-series, which I, I did a couple episodes for. They really liked them. I could have kept doing those, but they were a freaking ton of work. It was decent money, but I wasn't being able to do stuff on this channel. So there was no growth here. And it, like, it just, it was a, it was a tough dichotomy to, to handle. I couldn't do it. So then I pitched movie feuds to them, which they really liked. And then we rebranded it real rivalries. I did, I think 32 episodes over eight months. This is the most frustrating thing. They said it was all looking good. They said the numbers were great. I even asked them if my wife could quit her job that she absolutely hated. So I could keep doing this week to week. And they said, while YouTube is uncertain, as you know, we're thinking things are gonna be great for a while, a while now. So yeah, I would say go ahead, let her know. And two weeks later, they said, hey, we're canceling Real Rivalries. Just, they had, I guess, a big management, you know, cause Valnet owns Screen Rant. It's a much bigger company that has different properties on YouTube. And I think probably some of the big wigs were, were looking at the numbers and how much they were spending and said, we gotta cut all your new shows, which they did. They cut three or four of their new shows. We're gotta, we gotta give more money to Ryan George because he's carrying our entire channel. He's the guy that does the pitch meetings, which are great. Won't, won't deny that. 
And uh, yeah, we're just going to focus on the things that we know are working and maybe down the road we'll experiment some more in the future. But as for now, no, not going to happen. And that was just, that, that, that hit hard. What would I do differently? I have no idea because what I did differently is what got me the real rivalries to begin with. You know, I, I put myself out there, uh, which I suggest all of you do. If you have a show or an idea, just start hitting people up. Email, spam them or ever. One time, two times. Don't don't be obnoxious. But it never hurts to put yourself out there. And people are scared to do that, honestly. I know I am. I often don't do it. But lately, I've been getting a little bit more proactive. My goal today was to answer these questions in a brisk, timely manner. That didn't happen. I rambled again. I'm going to cut it off here because I have other videos to film before I go pick up my son from school in like 10 minutes. So we'll see if I even get anything else accomplished. Thanks again for the questions, guys. Look forward to these every Monday. Videos are supposed to come up in the afternoon around 3 p.m. Central Time. That's the goal. This week is going to be a disaster. They're going to come out a little later uh, or not at all, but they're supposed to be out Monday through Friday. I've been sick. I'm recovering. And then there's going to be random videos based on news events that come out. So I'm just I'm just trying to get a couple different flavors, but look for them around three or later. And since you made it to the end screen again, thank you very much. If you are a Patreon or a YouTube join member, people have been jumping into Patreon. It's awesome. I have around 70 now. That's I think the highest I've ever had, but it would be great to get get more. You know, some people are just giving a dollar that that's great. Whatever you can give is awesome but let's really pump the Patreon numbers up because YouTube is a crap show with its pay or here on YouTube join, you can do that as well. Thank you.